Hi, I'm Bobby Maggie with Federal Educators and welcome to the Federal Employee Benefit Show. Our experience in working with federal employees has taught us that no one solution is right for every situation. In today's show, we're going to help answer the most common questions we receive every day. How will I retire and when am I eligible to retire? What is MRA? What year would you like to retire? How do I calculate my FERS, my SERS annuity? And what is the cost of survivor benefit? What happens to Fegley when I retire? And what should I do with my TSP? Should I buy back military time? And when should I elect Social Security? Should I roll my TSP to an IRA? And what about Roth or traditional IRAs? We understand your benefits, its strengths, and its weakness, and we know how to help you get the most from your retirement plan. This show is to help educate you on your federal benefits and help you take full advantage of all that your federal benefits have to offer. When it comes to your federal employee benefits, what you don't know can hurt you. So sit back and take some notes. All of this and more on the Federal Employee Benefit Show, and it starts right now. I'm excited to talk about something that I know you guys are really good at. And we're gonna start with talking about the Thrift Savings Plan or TSP, as it's sometimes referred to, they've recently changed the contribution limits. How does that affect those in a traditional TSP versus a Roth TSP? As a government employee, your federal retirement is one of the most significant benefits you'll receive during your career. The impact of rising interest rates on this benefit cannot be ignored. Some of the questions we get you know, from a lot of the federal employees, and one in particular is the Fegley Insurance. Tell me what the cost is like when they start working and then where it goes when they start to retire and what are their options because it's very confusing to a lot of the federal people. Coming up next on the Federal Employee Benefits Show, the Q&A segment. Welcome back to the Federal Educator Show. I'm Christina Walsh and joining me today are Bobby and Chris Maggie. Thank you both for joining me today. I'm excited to talk about something that I know you guys are really good at. And we're going to start with talking about the Thrift Savings Plan, or TSP, as it's sometimes referred to. They've recently changed the contribution limits. How does that affect those in a traditional TSP versus a Roth TSP? Good well, question. Great question. Now, uh, I'm glad those, those questions come in because we get those you know, each and every week. But every year, the changes um, with contribution limits change in IRAs and 401ks. Um, TSP is no different. So... Um, you have the contribution amount, and then if you're over 50, you have a catch-up, which they call it. So there's a lot of money you can put away, it's up to $30,000 a year if you're over age 50, into a TSP traditional or Roth, which is a great thing for federal employees because you have the choice. You can put some in the traditional side and some into the Roth side. So the traditional side is before tax, where you uh, get a tax deduction by putting it in now, and then all in the future is taxable. Uh, if you put money into the Roth side, there's no tax deduction. It's all tax-free in the future. So someone who really doesn't need the tax deduction today and wants to sock away a lot of money, they can put up to $30,000 a year tax into free. a tax-free environment, into the Roth TSP if they're over f age 50. Yeah, and the other difference is that on the a tr traditional TSP, if you put in 5%, they match 5%. So it's like free money. But on the Roth side, they don't match um, that's the difference because um, you pay the tax up front, you grow tax-free, and later on you have a tax-free retirement. So that's the difference between both of them. But the contributions are really important right now because they can put a lot in. And believe me, they don't know. They, they don't know how much they can put in. So one of the strategies is maybe you put up 5% into the traditional side and then you put the remaining contribution into the Roth. Correct. So you're getting the match and then you can have tax-free money as well. Mm -hmm. so some of the strategies we talk about each and every day. Yeah. Yeah, and it's amazing because some of the people go, I didn't know I could do that. So they say, well, why wouldn't I do that? And the question is, why aren't you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're trying to tell you. So it's, that's the difference. But um, again, most federal people don't understand, you know, the rules of TSP and Roth, but that's what we do. We try to help them out. That's great. A lot to understand there, mm -hmm. and that's what you guys are good at. So we talked about contributions. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about now taking money out. Can you explain the in-service withdrawal option mm -hmm. with a TSP? Sure. Yes. So the age-based withdrawal or in-service in distribution is where you have your TSP, and once you reach the age of 59 and a half, 
then you're able to take the money that's in your TSP traditional or the Roth and separate it. You can open up an IRA or a Roth and then transfer the money over. It's a non-taxable event. So, um, and the reason why you would want to do that is because you might have options that are uh, better or maybe uh, outside the TSP where you can create multiple income streams or different investment options. But you, when you do this, there's no taxable event. So that's why you want to work with the right advisor to start planning your retirement. So if you're five years out or 10 years out and you're age 59 and a half, definitely look at the options, see if it's right for you. But the misconception of that is that if they do roll it over, they think their TSP is done and it continues to stay open, you still can put money in and the government still matches 5%. So like Chris said, you have the money outside the traditional in an, in an IRA, um, and then you have money still going into the TSP, which they're matching, and then the choice is put five in, so they match five and put the rest in a Roth and do it again. Mm -hmm. So it's a big benefit to them, but again, the education side of it, um, the federal educators or the OPM doesn't tell them that. And um, you know, we've helped so many people do that, so that's a great question. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so here's another term I don't know that you guys can educate me on. <laughs> what is high three and high how three. does that calculate? Right. So we always talk about how federal employees have the best benefits. Why? Because they have health insurance with the FEHB. They mm -hmm. have the TSP. We talk about contribution and matching. Um, they have FEGLI, which is the life insurance. But they also have... Um, the pension. The pension. Mm -hmm. and, and it's guaranteed income. And most companies these days don't offer the pension anymore. So the high three is how do you calculate your pension? And, and they take your high three, so your average pay on three consecutive years of service. So let's just say you started out and you made $40,000 a year, and then um, 20 years later, now you're making $100,000 a year. Well, your pension's based off of the last three consecutive or the three highest consecutive years averaged out. That's what the average high three is, so it's important when you calculate your pension amount. Yeah. yeah, so we run the federal benefits analysis. That's how we show them what they're gonna get, which yeah. they don't know. Yeah. You know, um, they don't understand how the pension works. So when we show them your high three, and they're always confused, like, what's a high three? Yeah. You know, high three is your highest income, and they gotta go back and they have to look at it because they may be in line for a raise, but it's the highest three years, consecutive years, mm -hmm. that determines how much they get for a pension, and it's important that they get that, so now they know what they're gonna get as a guaranteed income. Yeah. Pretty important. Help them make some more informed decisions yeah, about where they're going. Yeah, that's the whole point. They need to know the rules. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of pensions and making informed decisions, what are the age requirements that are needed to be met to be age eligible to retire and collect that pension? Yeah, so there was the old system with the CSRS, and then they have now have the, the FERS, FERS. <laughs> so the FERS, where a lot of um, uh, most employees are now, you have to reach what they call MRA, minimum retired, minimum retired age, with 30 years of service, or be 62 with 20 years of service, um, or actually uh, 62 and five, five years of service. Mm -hmm. So it's 60 and mm -hmm. 20, MRA with 30 years of service, or 62 and five. Did you get all that? I think <laughs> Did so. you get that? I'm a little confused. Did you write it down? <laughs> <laughs> so you think the viewer knows what's going on? <laughs> yeah. So let me give an example. So say I was uh, 63 years old and I want to work for the VA. Yeah. Um, I'm 63. I would have to work five years. Right. So I would be 63 and five is 68 and five years of service. Now I'm eligible for the pension. Okay. So if I work four years, then I'm 67 and four, I'm not eligible for that pension. So again, you have to reach MRA in 30 years of service, mm -hmm. age 60 in 20 years of service, or age 62 with five years of service, and that's the eligibility. And if you think about service. that, how many people today <laughs> don't have that pension? They're working for three, four companies, and they don't have the pension that the older folks had. So the federal employees have the best a benefit on the planet because that's what they're working for. Post office people, VA people, um, any any federal agency, even the government. Yeah. That's um, I won't go into names, but <laughs> they're doing pretty good when they retire. Yeah. They know that, so they have the greatest benefits. So that's how that's calculated. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Uh, that's great. Well, thank you both for mm -hmm. joining me today and answering some of my questions about well, TSPs and federal benefits. We'll be back with more after this. Hi, I'm Chris Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. Want to know how much your first pension will be? How about when you can retire? At Federal Educators, we specialized in federal employee benefits for over two decades. Schedule your free benefits analysis with us today. 
Clearly, understanding your benefits, such as how and when to take distributions, is critical. Our benefit analysis will cost you nothing. Not taking it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. We look forward to speaking with you. Hi, I'm Bobby Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. How much will you receive in your pension? How much does the survivor benefit cost? Can you keep your health insurance in retirement? With a free benefits analysis, we will answer all these questions and more. As a federal employee, it's critical to have a clear understanding to maximize your benefits. From FERS retirement to Social Security and health insurance, our team at Federal Educators specializes in knowing your benefits. Schedule your free benefits analysis today. Coming up next is the topic segment on the Federal Employee Benefits Show. Welcome back to Federal Educators. I'm Kirk Agus. As a government employee, your federal retirement is one of the most significant benefits you'll receive during your career. The impact of rising interest rates on this benefit cannot be ignored. Recently, there has been a lot of discussion about how changes in interest rates can affect our economy and financial markets. But what does all this mean for your federal retirement? Today, we will explain how rising interest rates can potentially impact your federal retirement as a government employee. Let's get started. As a federal employee, it's important to understand how fluctuations in the federal funds rate can impact your retirement savings. The federal funds rate is the interest rate at which banks lend money to each other overnight, and it's set by the Federal Reserve. When this rate rises or falls, it can affect the interest rates of money market funds in your retirement plan. In a move that has been widely anticipated, the Federal Reserve has hiked up interest rates once again. This latest increase marks the fourth time this year that rates have been raised, and it is expected to have an impact on various sectors of the economy. One area that may be particularly affected is federal retirement plans, which are a key component of many government employee benefit packages. The reason why higher interest rates could affect federal retirement plans is that these plans often rely on investments in fixed income securities, such as bonds. When interest rates rise, the value of these securities tend to fall, which means that retirement plan returns could decrease as well. This could lead to lower overall benefits for retirees and potentially create challenges for those who are already struggling financially during their golden years. You may be thinking, how will this affect my retirement? Federal employees who participate in the Thrift Savings Plan, TSP, will likely see a bump in their returns as higher interest rates typically result in higher returns on investment. Those who are already retired and receiving benefits from the Federal Employee Retirement System or Civil Service Retirement System may not be so lucky. The cost of borrowing for the federal government will increase with higher interest rates, which could put pressure on Congress to find ways to cut spending. This could potentially lead to cuts to retirement benefits or other forms of federal compensation. What can you do to take these rising rates in stride? As interest rates continue to rise, it can be difficult for many individuals to navigate the changing financial landscape. This is especially true for those who are retired or nearing retirement, such as federal employees who have access to government retirement plans. There are several steps that these individuals can take to ensure that they do not suffer a significant impact on their finances. Federal retirees and government employees need to review their investment portfolios and make any necessary adjustments. This may include shifting investments towards more conservative options, such as bonds or other fixed income securities. It may be wise to consider taking advantage of tax advantage retirement accounts like IRAs or 401k plans. Another important step is maintaining a diversified portfolio, which will help mitigate risk in times of economic uncertainty. By shifting some investments into short-term bonds or cash, retirees can safeguard their portfolios and ensure steady income streams. Plan with the federal educators. Planning for the future can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. 
Our team at Federal Educators is here to help federal employees navigate retirement planning and prepare for rising interest rates. With our educational resources, you can feel confident in making informed decisions about your financial future. From understanding the intricacies of federal retirement plans to maximizing your savings potential, we are dedicated to helping you achieve your goals. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact us today at 813-491-1786 or fill out our form online at federaleducators.com for help with your federal benefits. Now is the time to take control of your financial future. Call us or go online at federaleducators.com and ask about a free federal benefit analysis report. This is a fully customized report tailored specifically to your federal benefits. Call today, 813-491-1786 or visit us online at federaleducators.com. Hi, I'm Bobby Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. Do you want to know how much your first pension will be? How about when can you retire? At Federal Educators, we've specialized in federal employee benefits for over two decades. Schedule your free benefits analysis with us today. Clearly understanding your benefits, such as how and when to take distributions, is critical. Our benefits analysis will cost you nothing. Not taking it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. We look forward to speaking with you. Hi, I'm Kirk Agus with Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. How much will you receive in your pension? How much does the survivor benefit cost? Can you keep your health insurance in retirement? With a free benefits analysis, we will answer all these questions and more. As a federal employee, it's critical to have a clear understanding to maximize your benefits. From FERS retirement to social security and health insurance, our team at Federal Educators specializes in knowing your benefits. Schedule your free benefits analysis today. Hi, I'm Chris Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. Want to know how much your first pension will be? How about when you can retire? At Federal Educators, we specialized in federal employee benefits for over two decades. Schedule your free benefits analysis with us today. Clearly understanding your benefits, such as how and when to take distributions, is critical. Our benefit analysis will cost you nothing. Not taking it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. We look forward to speaking with you. Coming up next on the Federal Employee Benefits Show, the Roundtable segment. Welcome back to Federal Educators. My name is Bobby Maggie, and I'm here with my son Chris and Kirk Agus, and we are going to answer a lot of questions today. But some of the questions we get, you know, from a lot of the federal employees, and one in particular is the Fegley insurance. Tell me what the cost is like when they start working, and then where it goes when they start to retire, and what are their options because it's very confusing to a lot of the federal people. Yeah, great question. So Fegley comes up all the time, mm -hmm. and it's interesting when we ask clients, you know, what type of life insurance do you have? Do you do you have the FEGLI Fegley? And I say, well, I'm not sure what that is. Go back to the leave and earnings statement. Remember, we've, we've mm -hmm. always talked about the L&E. So you can look on deductions and you can see Fegley. And again, there'll be a code, typically a letter and a number. Mm -hmm. It could be a Z5, which is a lot of life insurance. Could be CO, which is basic only. Well, while you're working, the cost is fairly inexpensive, but it does increase every five years. The longer you work, the older you get. Um, again, the more insurance you do have, yeah. the more you're paying for it. So if it's just basic, that's the lower amount of cost. But when you start adding on option B, which is a multiplier, which you can go up to five times, mm -hmm. then you see option C, mm -hmm. which is for a spouse or mm -hmm. even dependents, that's mm -hmm. where the cost really starts to add up. And it's amazing to me how many federal employees honestly don't know how much life insurance they have and then we add it up, and you asked a question, did you know that you had this much coverage? And the answer is always Well, leading no. into that, then let's just talk about basic, how it's calculated when you know, a new employee you know, comes on. What, what does basic mean, and how much do they get when they start? Yeah, that's it. And when you start the federal benefits, um, 
you, when you're younger, it's cheaper. So really what they do is they take your, your annual salary, so say you're getting 98000 well, they uh, round it to the nearest thousand, and they add two thousand. So mm -hmm. you really, your basic is a hundred thousand. Now, this is group life insurance. This is not whole life or cash value life insurance. So that's why it's right. cheap, right? So basic, that's the way it has calculated. Then they have option A, which is a flat ten thousand dollars, and then there's what you mentioned, option B, which is a multiplier. It could be one times, two times, three times, four times, or five times your basic. So if someone's making ninety-eight thousand dollars in their salary, their basic is a hundred. And if you have a five times multiplier, they have the basic plus 500, so they have $600,000 of coverage. Now, what's interesting about this whole thing, as I mentioned, is when you're younger, it's cheap. But as you get older, you might be making more so you can afford to, to, to take the coverage because it's, it's group insurance, it's cheaper. But here's where it gets it, is when you retire. And every five years, the costs increase. And that's why the federal benefits analysis that we do for um, you know, all our federal clients, it's so important because we can show you on the Fegley side what it's going to be in retirement. Mm -hmm. If you keep the multiplier option B, how that's going to uh, be more costly, which is going to in turn reduce your pension amount. Yeah. Well, so let's stay on that for, for a second. You brought up a good point. Um, we had a client that worked with um, federal. He had five times. Yeah. Um, he was, I think, in his 70s, maybe. Yeah. And we calculated his pension. And then we calculated what the Fegley was going to cost, yeah. and it basically took the whole pension. Now, the problem was his wife said, you know, honey, that means everything that you're making is paying for the life insurance. And he said, correct. But the problem was that he was not healthy. So if something happened to him, the health insurance, I mean, the Fegley would have paid tax-free money to her, mm -hmm. and, he, and the retirement would, would have gone away. So he was forced to keep it, but he didn't know that. Well, he was also forced to, to keep working. Yeah, exactly. You know, so he was a that doctor was working mm -hmm. at the VA and uh, met with us. And if he retired, just like you talked about, and he had to keep the five times the, the, the basic coverage, mm -hmm. when he retires, the pension starts here. Then the cost for that, that life insurance is like this. So at the end of the day, his pension amount is going to just pay the coverage of the Fegley. Yeah. So there's no additional income for them to live. So uh, he had to keep working. Yeah, so just if he, re to keep if he retired, then he would have had nothing to pay for the health insurance. Well, just right. his pension would cover it, and there was no other income source to give yeah. him what he's needing. Yeah. That's, That's where, you know, when we get into this, this, the discussion with the federal employees and we start talking about Fegley, mm -hmm. we ask the question, you know, how important is life insurance to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So you start looking at all the different things that they have. They have a home. You still carry a mortgage on it. How much is left on the mortgage? Right. What would happen if, you know, if you lose salary of one of you? Right. How do you replace that? Can you pay off the home? And it, also, too, if it's not important to them. Right. Because when you start talking about the cost in retirement yeah. and they're like, whoa, I, I, I can't afford that. <laughs> Gets expensive. There's options mm -hmm. for them that they don't even realize exists and they can reduce the amount of coverage. And in one case, they don't even have to pay any more premium. Yeah, mm -hmm. so when you retire, that's why the benefits analysis is so important as well, because when you calculate the pension, you can you have a couple options with basic. You can have no reduction. So say you're a $100,000 basic. You can keep that in retirement. Mm -hmm. There's a cost to it. You can have a 75% reduction. So that means your $100,000 is going to go down uh, two percent per month all the way down to 25 percent of the benefit mm -hmm. so and then 25,000 for life and or you could do a 50 percent reduction so it goes down one percent all the way down to 50 percent which is 50,000 and then after that you keep that for the rest of your life so there's different costs for those for those options now in, in doing that um, a good point that they don't know but if we do that where we get it down then you're able to get if you qualify for health insurance that might be a whole life policy that would be cheaper than paying that five times on the Fegley. Absolutely, there could be. Yeah. And then what, what the, the federal employees have to understand too is that when you talk about the 50% reduction, mm -hmm. there's still a, a premium cost mm -hmm. to that in retirement. The 75% reduction ultimately gets them down to paying no more premium. Yeah. Once it takes that 2% reduction all the way down to... 25%. Exactly. There's no cost yeah. after age 65. So now mm -hmm. they're left with what? A nice little final expense policy. Mm -hmm. So for those that view the life insurance as not important in retirement, yeah. 
have the ability to go that route, and they don't know that it exists. And again, that's the education behind it. Yeah. That's the federal benefits report. But here's the point. A lot of the federal people don't even know they have life insurance mm -hmm. because they're not told from when they get hired. Basic coverage and whatever salary they make, they have. And I can tell you there are cases we've had many people call us and say, you know, thank God that I did have it because now I have tax-free money and I didn't want to lose my spouse, but I didn't even know we were going to get that life insurance. Right. So the point that we're trying to make here is that a lot of federal people don't understand their benefits. Fegley is one of them. It's a very, um, it's costly, but, you know, it's something that you need. So if you're confused about Fegley and you have questions, give us a call. Go to our website, federaleducators.com, and request the free benefits analysis. So uh, we hope that helped you out. But we'll be right back. More from Federal Educators. Hi, I'm Kirk Agus with Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. Want to know how much your FERS pension will be? How about when you can retire? At Federal Educators, we've specialized in federal employee benefits for over two decades. Schedule your free benefits analysis with us today. Clearly understanding your benefits, such as how and when to take distributions, is critical. Our benefits analysis will cost you nothing not taking it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. We look forward to speaking with you. Hi, I'm Chris Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. How much will you receive in your pension? How much does the survivor benefit cost? Can you keep your health insurance in retirement? With the free benefits analysis, we will answer all these questions and much more. As a federal employee, it's critical to have a clear understanding to maximize your benefits. From FERS retirement to Social Security and health insurance, our team at Federal Educators specializes in knowing your benefits. Schedule your free benefits analysis today. Hi, I'm Bobby Maggie, owner of Federal Educators, a company dedicated to helping federal employees just like you. Do you want to know how much your FERS pension will be? How about when can you retire? At Federal Educators, we've specialized in federal employee benefits for over two decades. Schedule your free benefits analysis with us today. Clearly understanding your benefits, such as how and when to take distributions, is critical. Our benefits analysis will cost you nothing not taking it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. We look forward to speaking with you. Thank you for watching the Federal Employee Benefits Show. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Our goal every week is to help you better understand the retirement language so you know when to retire and know if you can retire. Make sure to tune in next week as we continue discussing all your federal benefits. Retirement may be more within your reach than you think. Request your free benefits analysis so you can understand all your federal benefits. Visit us online at federaleducators.com. That's all for today, and we look forward to seeing you here again next week.